It's applique week here in the Brent McGee quilt studio. Find out how I hand stitched my way from this to this. Hi everyone, Brent McGee Quilts here. Welcome back to my channel. This week we're continuing with the large coral field, it's called Chromis, the second in my Coral Reef Quilt series. Um, part one went all over how I did all of this quilting here on the wave. And this week I'm going to be appliquing more of these fish and coral that you see here. And I'm going to be preparing my canvas a little so I know where things need to go, like where the fish need to go and where the different uh, shades of the coral need to go. So I'll be showing you a bit of how I use my iPad to plan that kind of thing out. Also, I need to dye up some coral to applique down. So you'll get to see this week how I dye the coral. So we're gonna be doing a little day by day so you can see exactly what I did each day this week. Okay, so it's Sunday and what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna manipulate this image that I took of the quilt to include where I want my great wave of fish to be. So I've already inserted this image of my previous sketch. Now what I'm gonna do is turn the opacity down. I'm working in Procreate on my iPad, an art program, excellent, great for previewing things. I'm gonna move this around to get the wave exactly where I want it on my image. I'm drawing in the outline of where my fish are going to go. I'm just using this to figure out where I'm going to place some, I'm going to baste in these lines onto my actual quilt. That way I know when I start, you know, putting in fish, I know the shapes, you know, I know where they should belong. Now the other element is that I want the fish to all be kind of pointed towards a center point. Okay, that kind of gives me an idea where I want all the fish to go, so that when I put the fish in, They're pointing, so like the ones here, their shape will be pointing up, right? Like they follow the lines here, it's following the line there, over here, it's following the line here. So that everything is pointed in a single direction. I just, you know, I like my pieces. This is a kind of a theme I've got going on with these coral reefs where the creatures are all kind of heading in one direction uh, in unison, just to give the piece some kind of structure. So much coral reef art and coral reef quilt art is just sort of a hodgepodge um, collage of fish and coral any old which way. So I'm just trying to give it a real shape. And so I'm gonna baste in obviously the, the lines of the, where the fish are going to go, but also I'm gonna do some basting in of these orthogonals, I think they're called, you know, where you, the building block lines of a piece. Here, you can see I'm adding in indications of where I want shadows and lighter areas to be. It's a way for me to know when I'm applicating what needs to go where. All right, and now I've got my lines basted in that will show me where the fish go. I'm putting the direction their little noses will be pointed. And then also I've marked out here where all the shadow shaded areas will be. I know it's scary, I've done it in permanent marker, 
but all of this will be covered up with coral. So these are just marks that I've given to myself. I've even put in um, these straight lines that show me where the fish should go as well as I'm appliquing along. Okay, it's Monday. I've got a piece of plain Kona cotton down. You can see I'm marking it with a pencil. The width of where I want this coral to be. Uh, now I'm drawing the coral in with a permanent marker. Those will be the lines that I eventually use as my applique guide. I'm using a glass tabletop here, which is nice because I can dye right on the table. And when I'm done, just use spray cleaner and paper towel and wipe away the mess. I'm using Rit dye with a paintbrush and I've got my little cupcake palette over there. My goal with the coral was to make sure I have some really dark values of coral to add to the piece. So that's what I'm doing here. And here I'm adding in some lighter values. So I have a nice palette to work with, some darker here. The dye does run a bit, creating its own shapes, which I like. You never quite know what you're gonna get when you're dyeing fabric this way, once you've allowed it to set and you've rinsed it. Here I'm spraying it with dye fixative, which really helps fix the dye to the fabric. From here, I actually place it directly in the microwave while it's wet. These kind of RIT dyes, all-purpose dyes, they like heat to help the dye affix to the fabric. And a minute or two is enough for the desired effect. Then it's to the tub to rinse it out in cool water until the water runs clear of dye. As you can see, not too much dye is coming out of that. The final step in this dyeing process is to iron the fabric dry. So last week was all about the quilting of the wave. And this week is all about appliquing coral and fish. And this is the section I'm gonna be working on, but I'm just gonna see how far I get in a week. And here's my first line of coral applique done. Next on is the fish. And here you can see I'm using the needle turn applique technique. Where I use the needle to actually turn under the edges and take little stitches. It's slow going, but very satisfying. All right, so it's Tuesday, and today I'm continuing with applique. All week I'll be applique, applique, applique. But I found myself thinking about art. And quilting, and uh, how they intersect. So first of all, a quilt is art. There's all kinds of debate about whether or not a quilt is art or craft, but all one has to do is go to any museum, especially a big one like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where it's not just paintings and sculptures, but it's all kinds of antiquities as well. And we consider all of that art, even though at one point it was just a plate. 
or a, you know, a vase, a pot. And then now, since it's been, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years, we consider that to be art, worthy to be looked at, worthy to be considered as an art piece. So that quilt that you're working on right now, or that thing you're crocheting, or whatever it is, may feel like a craft right now, but in the future, should we have one, it will be art. Everything becomes art eventually. Garbage becomes art eventually. So <laughs> that piece of garbage you're working on is art. I have to remind myself about this issue about art because I'm a classically trained musician. I went to I went to a conservatory. I studied opera. I studied piano. I studied composition. I worked at opera companies. Uh, I played a Broadway show at the piano. I've done a national tour. I've been a part of making music and making art. And I always wanted to be a serious artist. Now my focus is a lot less on music and a lot more on this. And of course I've chosen to make art that could be considered more craft by many people's standards. Um, and yes, there is that sort of egotistical, I don't know, elitist, novice part of me that wants to be considered a real artist, artist. But um, I have to not let that take over too many of my thoughts because then, I don't know, you're make me, I'm making art for someone else instead of out of my own impulse. So these coral reefs that I'm quilting are really my own impulse that I've had since I was a kid. So if there's anything that's as close to me putting myself into a piece of art, this would be it. And so I can't let myself get dragged down in the minutia of, oh, well, you're doing realism, or you're depicting something, or, oh, it's merely pretty, or it's decorative. I can't let myself get bogged down in that because then suddenly I'm making things that I don't want to be making to possibly appeal to people who think that they should be the tastemakers in the world. So all of this to say, if you're someone who makes things, you're an artist, you're a craftsperson, maybe you don't consider yourself an artist, maybe you just consider yourself a craftsperson, please know that what you're making matters, even if it only matters to you, that really is enough. And so that's what I'm thinking about as I sew today. Every little fish that I put on here, every bit of coral that I put on here is a piece of myself that I'm sharing with the viewers of this piece. Okay, so Wednesday morning, and I'm excited because I've put in this dark row of coral and also this just all white, no dye row. I did that yesterday, put these fish on. And I'm already loving the contrast between this lighter coral and then this darker coral. Um, <clears throat> if you look over here, I've got several roll, rows in and there is some contrast, you know, this is lighter, this is darker, but nothing like this. So I'm thinking this idea I had where I wanted to take control of the color narrative, the value narrative of this piece, by adding in these extreme lights and extreme darks, it's going to make this more mid-tones sing in the piece. So I'm excited to add um, some more of these rows in today and see how the whole effect is going to play out.
So I've added another row of this white and then another row of the dark. And ooh, I'm really liking it. I'm liking the way these fish pop against this dark. And I think just this plain white, you see these fish coming through here as well, gives the eye a place to rest in all of this coral chaos. And as I begin to add more rows, I think it will start to make more sense when you see it. Okay, it's Thursday of applique week. And here you can see I'm cutting around this coral. I wanted to show you a slow down version of what goes on. I first go around and cut, leaving a rather small seam allowance. Then I go through here and notch my curves so that I can stitch around those curves. Now here's the actual needle turn. You see, I use the tip of the needle to turn under that little bit of fabric, make a stitch right on the edge. And again, use the needle to turn under that little notch and then grab a stitch right on the edge. I'm working flat here because I'm already, I'm, I'm stitching down onto an area that's already been quilted and it's pretty thick. And I want to make sure I maintain the, the shape here. So working flat against the table, I find is the easiest way to do that. And here I've added another color. We're just speeding it up. Working my way around these curves. And the darker color. It is fiddly doing this work and a little maddening, but in a good way. You really uh, you learn who you are and your tolerance for patience, or rather impatience, I should say. So after I applique rows of coral, I applique down fish. Here you see how I use my little template to draw, again using permanent marker, my fish onto the fabric. Now let's have a little fun. We're going to have a little fish race here in a second. I wanted to see if it takes me longer or shorter to applique fish down. So I've got three fish that I filmed myself appliquing, and we're gonna play them at the same time and see what happens. So here we are. I've th started three separate fish all at the same time, and they're off. I was curious to see if I would get faster or slower with each one. Top left is the first, top right is the second, and the bottom is the third one I started. Now let's slow this down. As we come up here on the end, each one, they're in, they're in about the same place on the fish, so we're kind of neck and neck here. It is a race, if watching paint dry is a race. You can see top right is already done. I'm already tying it off to the back there on the top right. The bottom one is now done. I'm tying it off. And finally, the top right is done, tying it off. 
So surprisingly enough, it took me just about the same amount of time for each one. And here is the final result of Thursday's work, one line of coral and one line of fish. Okay, Friday, the last day I'm gonna be working this week, and probably the last day I'll be working on this piece so intensely for a little while. I'm just laying out here what I plan to work on today. This is probably, I don't know, three hours of work ahead of me. And there it is, my last completed row of the week. It's been six days working on this applique of coral and fish. I'm exhausted from applique, but here, let me leave you with one last view here of what I started with and what I added. I'd like to thank you for watching the video and as will be tradition, I'd like to leave you with some views of the quilt and a new little piece of music that I've written just for the occasion. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. Thank you.